morning and welcome to Winnipeg no sunrise again this morning it's cloudy remember yesterday's video I said something about we had bad weather moving in and it was getting really really dark well about five minutes after I said that it started raining now the good news was it didn't snow <laughs> Uh, yeah, my neighbor uh, uh, was over for coffee and he was saying how uh, that we were supposed to be getting snow in the very next few days. Now, he's more into keeping track of the weather than I am, believe it or not. Anyway, there is going to be a rollback. And in the rollback, you're going to see that we got to step three. <laughs> Now, steps one, two, and three, we go through them pretty fast. There's not a whole lot of little piddly details that we have to try and put together. Uh, yeah, I had a very interesting experience yesterday trying to find uh, the parts. The parts called V2. <laughs> Eventually found them. You'll see them in the rollback. Now, the rollback is very long. I had, once again, I, I didn't realize that I had record press so much. And there's a lot of rambling, and there's a lot of, uh, I can't find this, or, you know, a lot of, you might say, foolishness. So, please, feel free to, you know, get right through it. Now, uh, in yesterday's comments, I got a, a comment from Gabe. Now, Gabe, you, you recall, Gabe is the guy who sent us these little uh, swabs that have, are turning out to be really handy. And... Uh, he lives here in Winnipeg, and he uh, sent me an email, and in the email, or, or rather, he sent me a, a comment, and in the comment, he says, I sent you an email, and then I got busy doing other stuff, and I forgot all about it until after I was just about ready to go to bed last night, and I thought, oh, Gabe sent an email. Let's see what it was. Well, uh, we'll talk about it later. It, uh, I got a picture I want to show you. And, uh, yeah, it's going to maybe change things just a little bit here. Uh, at least it'll, it'll change things that are already in the case. It probably isn't going to change anything on our Iowa, but we'll, we'll talk about it uh, a little later on uh, af after the rollback. So let's, uh, let's roll back and get that over with, and then we'll sort of try and move on here today. One more thing before I turn the camera off and readjust everything. Do you remember probably about uh, when, we were, when we were doing the easy line and I was saying you'll be able to see the easy line even from across the room? Well, the, this earlier I was looking in my monitor here when I was trying to get everything composed and I was noticing that I can see the easy line in, in, my, in my camera monitor here and it's not even a 4K monitor. Uh, so it's funny how that works. That very, very fine, easy line, it, it can it can be seen from from a from a distance. Um, yeah, I, I did years ago. I did hear an explanation for that. So somebody was talking about how you can see, you'll you'll see telephone poles away off in the distance, maybe maybe a a, a mile away, well maybe a kilometer away, and there'll be telephone lines or or power lines running from pole to pole and you can see the the line but you have to but what's mind-boggling is that that line being so far away is reduced down to to something really insignificant or whatever you want to call it you know it's really really small so it's amazing that you can see something that takes in just a fraction of a small fraction of a degree of your vision I think I've beat this to death, haven't I? Okay, let, let's roll back now. Okay, I'm guessing probably four hours has passed since I glued this up. And thinking back about it now, if I had have known that I was going to leave it clamped together for so long, the, uh, the extra thin would have been probably better. I, I think the extra thin will might... Uh, dissolve the plastic a little better than the quick setting. I think the quick setting is more 
it, it sets on the surface and then it, it yes it does work but then it it does have a tendency to evaporate really quick and uh, bottom line is I don't think it gives quite as strong a joint as the ordinary extra thin uh, now that's just my uneducated and I haven't tested it opinion uh, now about this uh, Tamiya toy drill uh, okay here's here's the thing this is why I like to use it 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 is so very very light and when I'm holding it I don't have extra weight of like from the uh, you know my uh, this one Dewalt Okay, the uh, the other drill, yeah, it, it works real good too, except that it is so heavy that you can't get the feel of of what you're doing. Whereas whereas with this, you can sort of get the feel of it. Is is the bit uh, s straight in the hole, or is it you know, or are you prying it a little bit one way or the other? So uh, that's why I like to use this, even though, like I say, it, it's very toy like uh, and very unprofessional but it works so darn good and and the the chuck is nice and true there's there's no uh no run out or very little run out okay so the bit the bit is probably bent but you know what i'm what i'm trying to say here um okay i've said enough let's uh take this off here okay that's that's going to that's going to help it's going to help this up here. Um, I'm not going to glue the deck on now, of course, because we're going to be wanting to, uh, you know, paint the deck and so on. Uh, I think I think we can probably glue these in place, or, or no, we were going to try the deck on here and make sure that the it was going to fit real good. So let's let's do that. Uh, I've got to do something this evening. I want to have a little bit of a rollback for tomorrow. Now this uh, stern section here, there is very little play in it, like for moving it this way that is, because these uh, gun tubs or whatever they're supposed to be, uh, they, they, uh, they sort of lock into place and there's, there's, the tolerance is pretty good. Maybe what I'll do is uh, I'll turn the ship around afterwards. Okay, I, I can see right now that if I was to glue number three here in into place, it it would possibly be too tight of a fit. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. Or or maybe not. Well, as I've said several times, I'm, I'm fairly pleased with the way this is fitting on. Uh, yeah, I, I think when the, when the time comes, mind you something I just thought of what when we're, we're when we're painting this I'm gonna to want to make sure that my weathering sort of all lines up uh, I, I had planned to do the painting and weathering with this deck off of the off of the hull but I don't know maybe uh, because I want it to, to blend together but yeah I'm gonna to want to be spraying it I like to spray the deck 
<laughs> spray and the and the hull uh, separately. So uh, I don't know, but we'll see what happens. That's that's a few days off yet, isn't it? Okay, let me just uh, turn this around here and I'll show you the uh, the way it fits at the back. Oh. Remind me tomorrow when the lights coming in the front windows a little better. I want to take this entire hull over to the case and just do a actual physical uh, measurement and see and see if it'll fit. I don't think there, uh, I don't think there's anything that goes on the bow here uh, further ahead than where my finger is right here. Uh, although maybe that. Uh, Thing that everybody's calling the pulpit goes a little bit further ahead. Well, we'll we'll just uh, do it anyway. Okay, just bear with me here. Okay, this is the this is the way the back fits, and if it, if it's pressed down, it seems to center itself the way it's supposed to go here. I'll just take it out, and you can see. I know what I know when I first saw this, uh, uh, the way that the way the hull was, I thought, oh, that's probably not going to fit too good, but actually, it it fits extremely extremely well. Now, once again. Uh, some people might think no, it doesn't, but uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm not as fussy as some people. <laughs> okay, okay, I've turned the ship around again. The bow is that way, and uh, this is where the two decks meet. Now, I'm going to just take it out a little bit here. this one as well. Now, I, I believe we're supposed to have this adjusted so that th both of these decks will fit on there. In other words, they'll, they'll butt together right where the seam used to be. Now that, that shouldn't be too hard. And I'm, I'm just wondering, it, it sort of has a tendency to want to be in the right place if I spread it, spread the, the the sides of the hull apart and just let it sit naturally. And let, let's just put this back on here and see, see where this is going to come now. Okay, it, it comes pretty much in the in the center. Now what what would be wrong with let me get this off again. What would be wrong with leaving this loose and and don't uh, you know uh, where's where's my pointer here? It's never where I want it. Okay. We'll use this uh, toothbrush here. I can get I can get it in there. Instead of instead of gluing it up against the sides along here and the same on the same over here on this side why not just leave it loose and just have it glued in down down in the bottom where the where the pegs go in okay Th that's going to hold it from coming up and in that way we we can spring this open just a little bit whereas if i try to glue it uh now i suppose it would be possible maybe after we get the deck on to to, to sort of glue in from the sides here through the no I don't want to do that I I don't think we need to glue glue it I, I think because it wants to naturally stay in exactly the right place we, we could just leave it uh, you know un, unglued on the sides it's not going to fall apart it's not going to pancake down <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about that anymore was I I'm probably going to get sued. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that that works out pretty good. That in this way, I don't know if you can see this one or not, but it, it has to go about a millimeter out, and then it drops down. And there is a little bit of a little bit of play now between the edge of this thing and the inside of the of the hull, which is fine. 
but it, it, it will allow me now to make sure that I have the deck and the gunnel of the, of the hull in a perfect location. Uh, otherwise, otherwise it's going to have to be uh, really forced in and uh, okay I think I've I think I beat this to death haven't I I must be getting tired I can't talk what do we got here two minutes after seven now I was going to uh, scribe along the inside of the of the hull where where the edge of this has to be uh, however I, I was noticing when I was trying to just let me get rid of this noisy thing here. Okay, I was noticing when I was trying to position this that it kind of doesn't go any further in. I was thinking, well, well, why, why is that? And and the reason for that is very simple. Just let me take this noisy thing off. Okay, we got it turned over now. You can see it. it there's this channel here. And yeah, the, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive now that we don't need to glue this to the sides. It's gonna, it's gonna sort of center itself in here. I was sort of worried that it might sort of move too far one way or the other, but it, it can't. So we're just gonna leave it loose. Let's, uh, let's recompose and glue this thing down. Okay, I'm not gonna use the extra thin. I'm just gonna use the, uh, to me, uh, I guess you call it thick. Um, regular cement because this is going to sit overnight just sort of try and get it down into the hole there Built. I suppose I should really get that off of there. Be a shame if it kind of melted its way right through the out the other side, but I don't think it would. Try and get this reasonably straight. Oh, yeah. Now this one and the one at the at the bow, I don't think it's gonna have to lock into any channels or anything. Maybe I should just look on the bottom. No, I'm not seeing anything. Oh yeah, there is. Well, we'll we'll get we'll have lots of uh, wiggle room here. Just want to make sure it's down all the way. I'm pressing fairly hard. 
Okay, now I thought you might like to see what I was talking about when I said, oh yeah, there is. Okay, we got this groove here as to sort of a tongue and groove type thing is going to be going on. Okay, <clears throat> I don't think there's anything more to do on step two. Step three wants us to glue the deck down. I'm not ready to do that yet. I'm going to think about that. Uh, I suppose we probably could go ahead and put these little uh, V2s in place. I don't see what that would hurt. Okay, they're supposed to go right in here. I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't find those and put those in place now. Do you remember almost four years ago when we were doing uh, the box opening and the sprue check and so on on the Bismarck? And I could not find the anchor chain. And I think there was a couple of other things. I could not find it. I went through all the packages, uh, looked looked everywhere. Well, obviously not everywhere, but I thought I had. Now, the V2s that we need here, uh, I, I went over and I checked through all the, all the packages. I could not find a V sheet, a V package or sprue. It, it just didn't exist. So then I, I went through the, uh, the parts the parts uh, here and you know I, I, I come along and there's there's L M N you know P R U well the next one should be V there there is no V N nothing nowhere is there a V and uh, now bottom line is I, I did find them and they're actually right here on the model table and if you know where to look you can see them. Now those of you who have built this kit, you you know where it is, right? It's like it's like we found the anchor chain in that extra little box that had the Bismarck turret. Remember that? It came with a little bo a little bonus. I better move this. Yeah, it came, came with a little bonus kit. It was a turret. Uh Tony built it for us, I think. Uh yeah, Tony Tony got it. And uh uh, anyway, uh, okay, I'm going to show it to you. I, I just, I just can't believe it. it. It took me about half an hour to find it. I thought they, they've got to be here, and I sort of looked at them by, by accident. Okay, they're right here. Now, that's 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 the V twos. I, I don't see V on here anywhere. <laughs> uh, I wonder, did you suppose the trumpeter does does something like this in every kit? They hide something, sort of like a sort of like a a puzzle, and you have to sort of figure it out. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Eight minutes to eight. I'm gonna call it a night. I'm feeling better now. I for a while there. Oh yeah, it it does it does say V two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See you in the morning. Well, it is morning. Okay. Now, are these just a disc, or are these sort of beveled a little bit? Yes, they're kind of they're kind of beveled on the edge. It appears, so that they will fit into that uh, that cone cone shaped thing that we have to drop them down into. Yeah, you can you can see that they're beveled at an angle. You know, like this. 
very slightly, but just enough that we want to put it with, in other words, this side up. Okay, you can see these circles here. I believe these are from what they call the injector, e ejector pins. Uh, the, uh, they're pins that help eject this whole thing out of the out of the mold after the uh, I guess plastics cool down a little bit. Uh, I'm not not a hundred percent sure about how hot it is, but I, I do know that it has to be molten to flow into the into the mold, and then I would imagine it would cool afterwards. So in, in other words, we we want to have these marks down because that's the way the uh, thing is going to be shaped. This is the first time I'm dropping it in there. Oh, that fits nice. Yeah, that's going to be okay. I think I'm just going to use some uh, uh, extra thin just to meld it in place. It doesn't have to be, there's not going to be a whole lot of force on there, like the little gun or whatever that's going to go in here. It's, it's not going to want to pry that out like I just did here. Maybe I'm, I'm going to just reposition a little bit. Oh no! Now, I was just looking at our little feathered friends over here at the bird feeder, which, by the way, I had to fill up again uh, yesterday. Um, and I'm noticing that the water is sort of not sticking to their feathers, sort of like a duck. I always thought that uh, birds didn't have that uh, uh, ability, you might say, to shed water. Otherwise, they'd, they'd be getting kind of wet out there. But it doesn't seem to be fizzing on them because obviously the water is dripping off of the the uh, top of the feeder and dropping down onto them. But it doesn't seem to be beading on them or anything. So it must be just running very quickly off. Either that or it's soaking in so fast we can't see it like a blotter. Anyway, uh, kind of interesting. At least I think it is. Okay, now back to the model ship. Um, being is that we are not going to be fastening the deck down for quite a while. Uh, I think it's probably safe to move on to step number four here and see what we can do here. Oh my, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to be busy. Okay, let's not even look at that. And once again, I'll put this on later. Uh, okay, it's, uh, we put on the uh, the bilge keels, and uh, what do you call those keels on the side? I, I forget. Uh, and then we also have to put on the rudders and the propellers. Um, yeah, okay, that's going to make a change. It's also going to make it so that it's going to be a little bit on the fragile side. I just won't be able to you know, pick this thing up and uh, rattle it around like I have been. Now, speaking of picking it up and rattling it around, uh, maybe now is a good time to take it over to the ship case and see if it's going to fit. I'll just uh, set the camera up on a tripod over there so you can watch. Okay, now this is actually the first time I've done this. It's not like I've done it before, and I already know if it will or will not fit. Now the the distance from right here to right here 
is the exact same on the inside of the case. So we don't need to take the plexiglass off or anything like that. We'll just we'll just see how it's going to go. Now let's let's be careful here. I'm going to put the I'm going to put the stern right up against the far edge. Okay, we got probably I can't really see too good from over here. I'm in the middle, but it looks like probably uh, three eighths of an inch or uh, a centimeter maybe. So even with with the uh, the pulpit in place, it, it should still fit. So, <laughs> boy, that was close. That was close. Okay, let's get back to the model table here. Okay. Uh, I think we're settled. Worse than a dog trying to lay down. Okay. Um, now some of these pieces I'm noticing. Let me sit down here. Some of these pieces we can glue in place now, um, but the rudders we don't want to be we don't want to be gluing them into place here. It looks like the rudders uh, we, they they can't be adjusted one way or the other. They're going to just go on straight, but we're going to want to paint them before we you know separately. The propellers we're going to want to paint separately. Um, so really, there's 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 just these keels on the sides here. And uh, and and these uh, these braces that I forgot the name of again, and uh, these parts here. Okay, enough rambling. Let's let's just recompose and find some some parts here. It looks like we need the uh, the H sprue, the F sprue. Okay, it appears that we only need two pieces off of the H sprue. And uh, that's this piece and this piece. And as far as the rudder goes, I was wrong about that. So let me move this out of the way a bit here. The rudder is made up out of each each rudder. It can be adjusted. This this part here will will be going into the hull, and then it will be fastened on a hinge. On, onto the rudder, which is, and the rudders are made up out of two pieces. Okay, um, now as far as the, the keels that go on the side go, I think that, just let me move my manual here, it would be really smart before we glue these in place. You can see there's, there's very faint lines here that help us to get it in the right spot. That's kind of nice. Uh, but before we glue them on, I think it'd be a good idea to clean up the hull first. There's a, you know, scrape the, scrape the seam off and sand it down. And I'm going to do that all off camera. Get it, just quickly get it done. Well, not too quickly because I want it, I want it done right. And, uh, and then I guess we could glue the, these pieces on. Um, okay, now, uh, I, I think maybe it might be a good time to, before this, this episode gets too lengthy and I want to cut it off later anyway, we, we might want to talk about what it is that Gabe said in his email. So, okay, here's what's happened. Way back in July, uh, Gabe was thinking that possibly 200 scale figures might look, look good on the Rodney. Now, back in July, I was saying things like, we're probably going to be to Christmas to get, you know, before the Rodney's done. So he was thinking he had lots of time, and then suddenly, as it, things started snowballing, you might say, we're, we're done, the Rodney. <laughs> well, apparently, the figures that he ordered, and I think they had to come from Spain, uh, have, have arrived. 
And he was thinking now that, that maybe they would, I just read the email again, and, and he said that maybe they might work good, I, I'm not getting this exactly right, but they might look good on the Iowa if he was to paint them up that way. In other words, in, in American, in American colors. <laughs> Uh, so uh, he was wondering if, if that would if I would feel he was imposing if he was to do that because since he got the idea of doing that I was starting to say things like don't send me any gifts don't send me anything that's gonna make my life harder <laughs> so uh, I, I right now I'm, I'm actually feeling very grateful I think that would be fantastic it'd be like when uh, Tony built the uh, the aircraft for the Bismarck, you know, that, that, that wasn't hard. All I had to do was just mail it to him and he mailed it back, <laughs> finished. <laughs> so, uh, there, there is one thing that, that does kind of bother me though. When I read his email last night, I thought, oh my goodness, I hope he does not want to deliver them in person and come into the house because I don't want anybody to see how I have gone downhill as far as uh, housekeeping goes. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, well, uh, when, the, when the wife got Alzheimer's a few years ago and, and then when she went into the care home, I just let everything go and it's progressively got worse and worse. My, my workshop has slowly moved upstairs and uh, <laughs> anyway, that's another story. So my feeling is that, yeah, we should, we should uh, take Gabe up on his offer. Uh, yeah, that's, it's very generous. Thanks, Gabe. Yeah, and you could just paint them up the way you think they would look good, either on for the either for the Iowa or for the uh, being as they uh, I think the uh, it said that they were British British uh, figures, um, so they they would look good either on the Hood or the Rodney uh, or on the Iowa. What whatever's best for you, you just let let me know because I won't know. To me, if I was to paint one of those things up, you know what I'd do? I'd probably, I'd probably take it and hold it by its little foot and I'd dip it in the jar of paint for the uniform. And then I'd dip it in just a tiny little bit to get the head. And then I'd dip it in even a little bit less after this, after the paint is dry for the hat. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, okay, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Thank you very much. We'll. Uh, We'll wait to hear from you. In the meantime, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow. <laughs>